All right, everyone, welcome to Siesta Mall. Uh, I think we're on episode 25. <clears throat> I could be wrong, I'll have to look that up after the stream, but I think that's right. Um, last, let, let's get the mall moving. And the last episode, we did quite a bit of remodeling and kind of shifting some stuff around so that we had uh, more room for more stores. Um, <clears throat> We shifted some stuff around here. What is this? Oh, that's the Sears. Okay. Yeah, we moved the Discovery Zone over to the other side of the mall, away from the theater. And then we kind of re-shifted the way the theater was so we could add some more stores in here. What do we got? We got a Deb store. Oh, that's right. We put a Deb store. And then we put <laughs> the original cookie company. Oops. That's not right. We gotta fix that. The original company, Cookie Company, right next door to the dub store. And uh, what else did we do? What's this? We got a casual corner. A Fletcher's Music, the organ shop. <laughs> An Eddie Bauer. A Ladies Foot Locker and a Yankee Candle Company. We may have added some other stores as well, I can't remember. It's kind of hard to keep track of what we did um, each episode, but I do always post the um, recordings of these the next day, so if you need to catch up, they're all there, all 24 plus this one, 25 episodes. Uh, let's see here, who is that? The Lion 1856 asks, do you plan on eventually making this a dead mall, or is this something different? Um, I. I don't know. I mean, it's... I don't know that we can... I mean, we could do some things to probably kill it, but... If it's going to become a dead mall, I'd like to have that happen naturally through some mistake that we made versus, like, trying to make it happen. Um, I mean, we've done some pretty silly things in here, and the mall's thriving, so... Uh, it's, you know, it's three floors now. Oh, we did some other stuff, too. I think we added, like, some fountains and areas and stuff. Um, where did we do that? I think we added this, like we added this fountain area right here with the aesthetic statues. But I think we filled in every empty storefront that we put in, so let me just double check. Oh, thank you, uh, Jake Kraus with the uh, super chat there, I appreciate it. The quickest way to see if you have an empty store is if you have something that doesn't have a name. It'll just say, like, store number whatever. So let's just take a look and see if we have any empty storefronts to start, which I don't think we do. But with what we did last episode on the first floor, it should give us places to expand on the second floor. And I do have an updated uh, hard copy of the store list, so I'll be able to check quickly if there's something that we... to check and see if there's a store that we have already or not, so... It doesn't look like any any empty stores there. Uh, Jake Krause says, awesome whistle stop video. Any updates on comments being restored? Also, were those signs hanging up for sale or just the trains? A uh, couple of questions there. Uh, the comments thing I'll, I'll, I'll address first. Uh, no, unfortunately I don't have any updates on my comments being restored on the main channel. Uh, YouTube is pretty much flat out ignoring me when I when I complain and, and try and get them to review their decision and, and fix it. Um, they're still labeling my channel is a channel that features children and is high risk for predatory comments towards children, which is bizarre because my channel does not feature children. <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, I usually go out of my way to make sure that I, I don't film children when I'm out filming, so that's very... Very weird. I, I can't. I can't figure out how that decision was come to. Unfortunately, um, I have been in contact with uh, a support representative through email, and all they'll tell me is that their internal teams are looking into it, and that the comments being disabled is supposed to be temporary. But that's as much as they'll tell me. So uh, I still nag them every day about it. But like I said, they're just flat out ignoring me at this point, which sucks. Oh, thank you, uh, the Lion, eighteen fifty six, with the super chat there. Um, so yeah, that's that's something I'm still dealing with. The way that I'm trying to get around that is because the, the videos that I do, um, the comment section is very important because that's where people share, 
you know, their memories and, and stuff like that of the places they film. So to get around that, um, comments are still enabled on my community tab. So what I've been doing for um, each video that I post, I've been posting the video over in the community tab as well. And people can comment and whatever on those posts, but unfortunately still on the main videos are disabled. It's, it's pretty frustrating, unfortunately. Um, I think there was another question that you asked too, and I, I totally forgot what it was. And I don't have any way to scroll back up in the chat, so... Um, oh, I think somebody asked what mall was in the thumbnail. That is... Um, Cottonwood Mall in Albuquerque, New Mexico. That's what that mall is. That's one that I did a video on uh, a little while back. It's a pretty interesting video if you want to look that up. It's on the main channel. Uh, let's see here. Guy on the mic says he feels like YouTube just likes making problems with creators. Yeah, you know, the problem is is that they rely quite a bit on automated tools, which isn't the best thing in the world. Wow, I'm just noticing we have a lot of room to expand on the second floor here. Look at all this. We can... Because the, the hallway kind of ends right here, and all of this is not covered, so that might be what we pursue this episode. But anyways, um, they rely a lot on automated algorithms and tools for, for everything, for uh, content ID as far as copyright stuff goes, um, how and where to share your videos, all that stuff, and they're very flawed. Um, I actually work in the quality assurance field, and I can tell you that anything that relies on automated systems at least has some issues if it's not flat out broken. That's a technology that's relied on way too much and it's not anywhere near ready for the prime time. Anywhere, anybody that's using it for anything, it's not ready, so. Uh, let's see here, GMC New new Look, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, I'd put a Richard Serra's fine soap shop if not already. You know, we have a Richard Serra's uh, used mattress store already. <laughs> I don't know if we need a soap shop too. Uh, oh, and then the Lion1856 asks, is this based on a 90s store? Do you remember the clothing store structure? I do remember the clothing store structure. I could not af really afford to shop there in high school, but I had some friends that did, and honestly it was overpriced, but I do remember it. I don't think they're around anymore. Make sure you save any progress. Thank you. Dang MQ. Actually, we haven't really done anything yet this episode, so let's do that. Um, let's add some flooring up on the second floor <laughs> and uh, see if we can get some more stores in here. Wait, is that, which one are we using? Oh, it was that one. Okay. Okay, so I'll knock the wall down um, in a minute. Man, we've got a lot of room to expand up here, though. Because we can cover the whole theater. I don't know that I want to build out more floor than we need just yet, so... Let's, uh... Let's knock this wall down. And then we'll extend the, uh, we got the hallway of doom right here. We'll extend it out. wonder if the automated wall thing would work. You know what, let's, let's save it. Oh my god, that awful Thanksgiving display is going. Let's save it and try the auto wall thing. And then if it screws up in some way, we can go back to the save file. Yes, I'm sure that I want to overwrite. Because I th this uh, walling tool, there's this auto wall tool, has been hit or miss. Oh, see, I screwed up because I picked the wrong damn... Urgh. Hold on. I didn't have the right wall selected. That's why we saved it. see here. Uh, what happened to you last week? Did I not stream last week? Or was that... Oh, you know what? I didn't. I had to work. That's right. I had to work. I, when I... On, on nights that I'm... Or on Fridays when I'm not going to stream or uh, on the rare occasion when I have to move it to Saturday or whatever, I always post 
on Twitter and also um, a post on the community tab on both the main Retail Archaeology and the RE2 channel's community tab, basically explaining what's going on, that I'm not going to be streaming or it's been moved or delayed or whatever. So if you're looking for updates on the stream, always, uh, always check the community tab on either channel because there'll be a post there. Yeah, last week, last week was so crazy with work, I don't even really remember <laughs> much of it. It's all kind of a blur. This week was, was crazy, too, and I actually have to work tomorrow morning, which sucks. Okay, let's try this again. Build wall. Actually pick the right wall. You know what would have been interesting, I should have looked real quick, is how much money that cost us to replace the walls, because we're just rolling in the dough, too. That's the one we're using. A uh, guy on the mic says he's glad he made it to the stream. I'm usually late for these. Well, like I said, if, if you, for some reason, miss miss the live stream, uh, I do always post, you know, you, most of the time Saturday morning. Sometimes it's been Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, or even Sunday. If I do the stream on Saturday, it's Sunday. Um, let's do this. Oh, okay, that worked out perfectly. Okay, so now we need to figure out... Um... Actually, I'm kind of... I'm kind of regretting that now. Maybe we should just... Fill out the rest of this. Even if we don't use the space right away. It's not like we're short on money. Yeah, let's do that. Let's fill the rest of this out. I just don't want to have to... What is... Oh, there's a store right there. Okay. Alright, let's... Um... Knock the walls down here. Am I not clicking somewhere that's... What's going on? Why can't I... Because it wasn't selected. Uh, I'm gonna have to redo the floor, but that's okay. No big deal. Jeez, I'm really screwing up. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Let's fix the floor real quick. There. And then. Oh, good. It's still selected. We'll auto wall. Okay, cool. Oh, wait. What is this weird. No. missing there. What about this? Can I just not... That's weird. Oh, it does like a railing. Okay, hold on. I screwed up. Doing that a lot this episode. Good thing we have lots of money in the uh, remodel budget. There we go. Okay. Now... If I click the wall thing again, will it just fix it? Yeah, it will. Okay, cool. Alright, we have lots of room to expand now. So let's put... Let's put a couple of storefronts... I don't think we can go with the longer... Yeah, that'll block it off, so we'll need to go with... Uh, looks like we can fit two... Two little guys right here. Uh, Jason Bolden asks, If you were able to bring back any company that has gone out of business, what company would you choose? Toys R Us for me. Um, uh, you know, I don't know. Like, If we're talking just strictly mall stores, I would love Babbage's to come back. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, Toys R Us is a good one, too. Oh, look, we can put a couple of, uh, will this fit? Of course not. Of course it's going to be a... a space there. Hmm. Jake Krause asks, we sh or says we should do 
A mall, trains, electric power wheel, animal, railroad outlet store. <laughs> Since those seem to be popular in these in the malls these days and have come from somewhere. Yeah, that's true. One more floor piece. Where am I missing a floor piece? Where is it missing? Uh, good morning, David McVeigh. I'm assuming you're not near me geographically if it's morning where you're at. Montgomery Ward would be another good one to bring back too. I remember uh, a lot of a lot of fond memories of shopping at Montgomery Ward. Maybe I shouldn't have. Hmm. I'm kind of second guessing this now because maybe I just want to put a short one in here because then. Yeah, that's weird. What if I do? Well, that's gonna be just as. Well, let's go back to the long one. Just wasting money. <laughs> oh, David, you're from North Yorkshire, UK. Wow, okay, yeah, that is the other side of the world. <laughs> I'd bring back Hollywood Video. Hollywood Video is another good one, too, because they had the Game Crazy stores, some of them attached to them, so you get kind of a two for one on that. Have I ever heard of the artist George Clanton? Yeah, the name sounds familiar, but I can't think off the top of my head who it is. Uh, Jason Bolden says, Half Price Books is a store in my area. Have you heard of it? Look at the name and you'll know what it is. Actually, I have heard of Half Price Books. There's one not... There's one over by Superstition Springs Mall. Um, that's been there for a long time. Chris Strader asks, whatever happened to the idea of Toys R Us coming back as Jeffrey's Toy Box? I don't know. I haven't heard much on that development. Um, KB Toys was talking about coming back too as pop-up stores for the holiday shopping season, but I don't think that ever happened either. Uh, yeah, you know, Jason's right. They it, Kroger, Some Kroger stores, they have like a little aisle or they'll have like a, a little really small store within a store kind of thing, like toy section. That's the Jeffrey's Toy Box thing. Okay, we need some stores here. Somebody mentioned structure. Do we have one of those? Do we have a structure? I don't remember. And that was just men's apparel, wasn't it? I think structure just sold guys stuff. Yeah, we don't have one. Of oh no, I dropped a page. Hold on. Okay. Okay, structure was just guy stuff. Alright, so let's do that. And from what I remember, they weren't very big either, so we could probably use... And actually, that's probably not far off from... What they looked like. I don't remember exactly. I just remember going into that store with friends and, and looking at the cost of things and being like, Oh my god, that's ridiculous. We got a structure there. I uh, just realized too, I totally forgot to start the music, so I'll probably just add it in post. <laughs> George Clanton is a pop artist who is also the vaporwave artist. Oh, okay, that's good to know. How do you say that word? Is, is it a spree? <laughs> Should do Dan Bell mall music. Yeah, that's usually what I, I usually add. And there's quite a few vaporwave artists that I follow that have um, let me use their music in video, so I usually play it in the background. I'll add it in post. Uh, Kurt Wakeman says Jeffrey's Toy Box is a cheap substitute for Toys R Us store. Thankfully, in my city, we have three locations. That, yeah, I don't understand why changing it to to Jeffrey's toy box. I mean, everybody knows Jeffrey the giraffe, but if I just told you, hey, there, let's go to Jeffrey's toy box, I don't know that people are going to make the link to that being Toys R Us, like in their head without somebody telling them that that's what Toys R Us has become. It's pronounced Esprit. Okay, good. That's one of those words that I read, you know, you read all the time and stuff, but you never hear people, never hear people actually say it out loud. <laughs> Do a Vaporwave mini disc store. 
Um, actually... Let's do... The really weird thing is, is there isn't... I mean, there's radio and TV, but I don't think that... There's not, like, record stores, one of the options. There's this music one, but then it, it makes it more... It makes it, like, musical instruments. Um, then there's videos, which looks like a record store. So let's use that. Oh, and I already like the... Except for, see, I don't like that, though. Yeah. Hold on. Where's this effect again? Yeah, see what I mean? The music one is just like musical instruments, but at least it's got a guitar. I don't know. It's weird that there's not, like, that's such a mall staple. I can't believe they didn't include include that as a, as a store type. But I actually know... What does radio and TV look like? See, that's not any better. I'm just wasting money, like, building these store types to see what they look like. No, not computer games. Oh, I'll use this, just because it looks like... What happened? Oh, did I wi I wiped out the whole store shell. Huh. It's like, why won't it let me build there? So, I mentioned, uh, the, the music I'm probably going to add in the background is from an uh, artist, Vaporwave artist named Encarta95, and he actually runs a Vaporwave label, but it's a floppy disk label. Oh, I guess I could have used the computer store type, but nah. Um, he... They, uh, Strudelsoft releases Vaporwave albums on floppy disk and I actually had um, some tracks from my Vaporwave EP uh, released through them on floppy disk not too long ago. So uh, if you look up Strudelsoft on Bandcamp, um, and I'll put a link down into the description of this video. Um, oh, I like that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. <laughs> Amanda, save! Alright, yeah, let's do that. We actually did some stuff. I think we've tempted fate long enough as far as not crashing goes. Save game. Did I'm always one of those people I gotta do it twice just to make sure it did it. Oh, I'm sorry, Casey. Yeah, we're we got a little bit of time left, so you'll catch some of it. But um, like I said, I always do post the recording the next day. So Sean Strife says you uh, bullshit with him on Twitter from time to time. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good old Encarta. Yeah, Encarta ninety five is a good dude for sure. He actually, um, if you look him up on YouTube, he's got a podcast that he does, and he actually interviewed me not too long ago on the podcast. So somewhere. You just look up like Encarta ninety five retail archaeology. I'm sure you'll find it. It's it's about I think it's about thirty minutes or so. Ooh, service merchandise is a good one. We have lots of room now, and we bet we've connected the you know the, the this is all new this episode. So um, we could probably plop a service merchandise right here. Do we have that already, or is that Montgomery Ward that we have? We do not have service merchandise. We do have Montgomery Ward, though, right? Where's the... Yeah, we do have Montgomery Ward, but not service merchandise. That's not a bad idea. Somebody mentioned a brewery, too. We probably have room for both right here. Alright, yeah, let's throw a service merchandise. We need to think of some stores for over here as well. But how much... I mean, that's an... That, uh, I almost clicked the wrong thing. That's an anchor-sized store for sure. Um, I 
Did that give us room to put... I guess, yeah, we could put it up here across the way. So yeah, let's put this here. Oh, there we go. Now this, service, merchandise. And the question is, what kind of stuff should we put in it? Um, for sure, radio and TV. We get four. Four choices. So radio and TV for sure. Um, not videos. Yeah, housewares. I guess household goods. Yeah. Yeah, computers isn't actually it's computer games. I don't know if we want to I mean, yeah, you know, we might as well. I mean, I I did buy some Nintendo games from from service merchandise. Jewelry was big there too. You're right, jewelry was. Let's throw jewelry in there. One of these. Whoops. Where is the jewelry? Jewelry. Alright. So we got one more slot. Uh, Nora Lewis says, You got your first real computer at service merchandise. Cost you two grand. You know what's funny? Our, my family, we got our first computer at uh, Dillard's of all places. Back when... I don't think Dillard's has like like an electronic section anymore with like TVs and stereos and all that crap but back when I was a kid they did and my parents bought a Packard Bell 486 from Dillard's and I think it was around two grand if I remember correctly or 1800 or 21 or something like that it was right around two grand so what do we want to use the fourth slot for we've got um we got radio and TV household goods and jewelry we got one more item type we can put in there I think we have a Comp USA. I think. Maybe that was it. <clears throat> rotting Acres. Yeah, it must have been Rotting Acres and not here. Cameras. And Jay Cross bought an IBM Aptiva from Radio Shack in 1995. What else is under miscellaneous? I think it's of like educational, bank, uh, <clears throat> dry cleaning, tanning salon, no. Uh, Jason asked him if I'm still working on getting Rotting Acres back. I mean, I haven't given up on it, but I really haven't done much work. I actually booted it up the other day and it, it crashed immediately right when I tried to do something. So I, I don't know what the deal is. But I was kind of maybe thinking about doing a stream one night just to revisit it. I just don't know how to <clears throat> how to make it interesting. What about what's on our entertainment again? We got books and magazines, novelties, discovery, collectibles. No, none of that makes sense. What about art for home decor? That's not a bad idea. Where is the artwork? I know that that's a thing. Is it under here? Is it under... That'll work. Okay. Yeah, that looks nice. Cool. Okay, so now we have a service merchandise. So we've got, um... We've got a few more stores that we need to fill in. Why does that wall look weird? Oh, that was weird. It was just rendering weird. We've got lots of empty storefronts here, plus we've got room to add some things here-ish, so uh, maybe next episode we'll add a brewery or something. Uh, Mike, the Subaru lover, asked, do you have a DTLR? What is a DTLR? Why does that sound familiar? And I think we have a Build-A-Bear. Let me look. We do already have a Build-A-Bear. Mid-Atlantic gal, we've got that already. Uh, and I think we have a Things Remembered also. We don't have a Things Remembered. That's weird. 
need to fix that real quick. Because I know that there's a... Let's see, where can we put that? Put it right here. And we'll do artwork and uh, collectibles, I guess. Because there's not really like a things in, that are engraved <laughs> thing, but... Uh, Yeah, there we go. That looks good. I even like the storefront at Pickford. I don't know if I care for uh, things remembered. Remembered. I don't know if I like the flooring, though. The flooring's not white. I kind of remember they're having a little bit more neutral. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Cool. Glad we fixed that. I can't believe we didn't have a things remembered already. New Age store. We can do candles and spa combo. That's a good idea. JWB52Z says, Get this. My first computer didn't even have a hard drive. Whoa. The... Uh, the first computers I ever used didn't have hard drives. Like Apple, like, but those, I didn't own those. We just used those at school. But like Apple IIs, um, I think, like, I think the original Macintoshes didn't have hard drives either. I think they just had a single or dual floppy drive. I think later on they had hard drives, like 20 or 40 meg hard drives. But our Packard Bell, the 486, I think it had a 160 megabyte hard drive. So it was. And I, and I remember the salesperson telling my parents, oh, that's huge. You'll never be able to fill it up. Like, 160 megs is nothing. It is absolutely nothing. Well, it looks like it is about time to wrap up the episode, so I am going to save one last time. And I'm going to send you all with some homework uh, as far as this, picking out stores to fill these empty storefronts in. Um, there's a there's a post on the community tab that actually has a link to um, a Google document, which is what I've been re 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 referring to uh, throughout the episodes. That has um, a tab that has all of the stores in the mall listed by store type, and then also alphabetically. So uh, feel free to go look at that to see um, what stores we have already. I'll I'll post a link to it too on the, uh, a new community tab post when I when I make the. Um, recording of this live tomorrow. I'll post it over on the community tab. That way you guys don't... Because I think it's like three or four posts down the, the link that I posted. So that way you guys don't have to dig. But uh, yeah, you can go check that out and see what stores we already have. And then hopefully next week we can come up with some stuff to fill in these empty spaces. And also at a brewery. I like the idea that it's something I've been seeing at malls more and more often is breweries. I'm having a hard time saying that tonight. So I think that would be interesting to add as well. So we are all saved there. Uh, oh, Kurt's asking why not, but somebody told him we do have a chess king already. That was one of the first things we added, I believe. So the uh, the chess king T-shirts are still available over on the uh, retail archaeology merchandise shop. I'll put a link down in the description of this video of how to get to that, as well as it's a Teespring store. So I've got a uh, Rotting Acres Mall shirts there, Siesta Mall shirts, retail archaeology shirts, and I've got some shirts for a couple of long dead stores that I'll continue to sell until somebody sends me a cease and desist. <laughs> but I, I looked, I, the, the trademarks for them have, have fallen into the public domain, so it shouldn't be a problem. Do a dead mall stream on Rotting Acres. Yeah, I should do that. As far as I know, the, 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 where we saved it, the mall wasn't dead, it's just that we literally couldn't like build anything else or add anything or do anything without it crashing, so. Um, but, whoa, we're getting we're getting this meter filled up pretty good. I wonder what happens when it gets all the way. Oh, let's look, let's look at the research real quick. CDs. This increased sales at music stores. Awesome. Let's start that res. Well, we'll start at the next episode. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and have a good night from Siesta Mall. Thank you.